Nebraska fans chanting, we're number one following the victory in the FedEx Orange Bowl over Tennessee tonight. Time again for the FedEx delivery of the game. And here it is, Amon Green, second of his two touchdowns, 22 yards, part of his record-setting performance tonight. Now let's check in down on the field with Jim Nance. All right, thank you very much, Sean. So in the second half, Nebraska tonight piles up 340 rushing yards in the second half alone. Craig and Lou, you forecast that, Lou, for the second half. They would start mounting that big yardage. The big question, though, now, who's number one? Coach? Well, well I think that it's difficult not to give it to the University of Michigan. They did everything they need to do, went undefeated. But how do you look at Nebraska and say, hey, you put on an awesome performance all year. I can't vote you number one. I think they both ought to share it. I really and truly do until we have a playoff system because they both did everything you needed to do, which was go undefeated. Well, I, I can't straddle the fence. I've got to have a vote well, on this thing. And I've thought long and hard about it here in the second half. And I've really talked to a lot of people that I trust their opinions. And I think everybody, just like me, this is unfortunate that we've been placed in this position here. Both of these football teams, Michigan and Nebraska, deserve to be national champions. So I've taken it down to this. Who would I vote for, number one, or who would I vote for on a game like this, Nebraska or Michigan? I think Nebraska and their option would win the football game and their defense would win it for them. I'm going to vote Nebraska number one in the country. I hate to do it because Michigan's done everything they, they should have done to win a national championship, but we got to vote, and I've done it. Why couldn't all the voters get together tonight, the chairman of one of the polls, say, hey, guys, give me your half vote to each team and go ahead and announce some co chance Why couldn't they do that? Because they won't do it, because they say they have to vote, they select one. But Michigan did everything you could I, possibly do, but so did Nebraska. Now, it doesn't matter to the coach. It doesn't matter to the fans. It does matter to the players because years from now to say, I was part of national championship, and there's no way that I think you can say no to either one. And, and I'm being honest the way yeah, I feel. And I think it's going to be unfortunate because it's going to come out of vote, and there's going to be controversy, which is going to continue to fuel, to fuel all the, the spark and the desire for a national playoff on the field. Well, coach Osborne goes out with his fourth straight bowl victory. He is a man who never changed in 25 years, a phlegmatic, unflappable figure on the sidelines, off the sidelines as well, a man of deep faith and at times blinding loyalty. But at all times a man devoted to his team, to his state, and to the pursuit of excellence in football. He's leaving in his absolute prime, winning precisely 60 games in his last five seasons, an unheard of 12 wins per campaign. So congratulations, Coach. Regardless of what the pollsters tell you, you went out on top in your silver anniversary season, leaving nothing but golden memories. It's time for the presentation. Let's take it back to the field and to Michelle Tafoya. Michelle? They are chanting T.O. in the crowd for none other than Tom Osborne, who has just coached his very last game. But without further ado, let's turn it over to Leslie Pantene, president of the Orange Bowl, to present the Orange Bowl trophy. On behalf of the Orange Bowl Committee and all the people in Miami, congratulations to the Nebraska Cornhuskers and especially, especially to Dr. Tom Osborne. Thank you. Thank you very much. Commissioner of the Big 12 Conference, Steve Hatchell, to present the Alliance Trophy. Steve? Thank you, Michelle. On behalf of all of the conferences and teams in the Bowl Alliance, we'd like to present this trophy to you, Tom, for not only an outstanding season, but to a great career. We want to congratulate the University of Tennessee for a wonderful football season and to the Southeast Conference for all of the great things they did in football this year. And in presenting this, Tom, I think the best part is, is that maybe tomorrow there'll be another trophy you can get as well. Coach, congratulations. A decisive win, to say the least, and given that and all of the other circumstances, what are your thoughts tonight on the national championship picture? Well, I'm, I'm very proud of our team. I think we did all we could. We, uh, we won 13, and that's all we played. And so I'm very proud of these guys. 
And I thought they played a great game. This is the last game for you in 25 years at Nebraska. You've coached your last game. How much of that has sunk in so far? Well, that's a, it's a kind of a bittersweet moment. Uh, very proud of the players. Have great appreciation for our coaching staff. Uh, most of what's happened has been due to their efforts and the players. We have great fans. I want to thank them for being here. So it's, uh, it's a great night for Nebraska. Coach, congratulations. Thanks, Michelle. I'm joined now by Scott Frost, the quarterback of tonight's winning Nebraska Huskers. What a game. Just describe the feeling at this point and also your thoughts on the national championship picture. Well, it feels great. I'm so proud of this team, and I'm just so proud to have had a chance to play for Coach Osborne. And I just want to say this about the national championship. You know, if, if, if all the pollsters honestly think, after watching the Rose Bowl and watching the Orange Bowl, that Michigan could beat Nebraska, go ahead and vote Michigan by all means. But let me finish. Let me finish. I don't think I don't think there's anybody out there that with a clear conscience can say that Nebraska and especially Tom Osborne, that great man, doesn't deserve a national championship for this. At least a share. Scott Frost has made his case. Nebraska seems to have made theirs. Let's send it back now to Jim Nance. Yes, indeed, Michelle. An urgent plea from Scott Frost. And there was a lot of frost in the end zones tonight here. Three touchdowns by the quarterback, but I'm on green. 206 yards on the ground, leading the way for the Huskers. Back with Phil Fulmer in just a moment. Just a short while ago, our colleague Ed Cunningham visited with the Tennessee head coach, Philip Fulmer. Here's what he had to say backstage. Coach, kind of a tale of two halves. The first half, you guys had him in control. What was the difference in the second half? Well, the first half, the two turnovers didn't help things. Uh, obviously, we, we played pretty darn well. This third quarter, particularly, you know, we've been beaten a few times in the five years that I've been the coach, but I don't know we've quite handed our butt, had our butts handed to us like we did physically in the third quarter. Um, Nebraska's a very, very fine football team, and that's one thing we did not want to have happen is them get momentum gained rushing rushing the football <clears throat> excuse me Peyton Manning spent five years with you can you even put into words the emotions you're feeling right now with his last game no I can't uh, Peyton is uh, everything to everybody at Tennessee and uh, he's uh, most of all a great person and uh, we're going to miss his leadership we're obviously going to miss his ability but uh, we're going to miss, miss Peyton Manning the person the most coach you have a vote in the coaches poll is Nebraska the best team in America well I haven't seen every team in America but Nebraska is the best team that I've seen and they'll have my vote. Coach, thanks a lot and best look in 98. Thank you, thank you. I doubt there's any other way tonight after that performance by Nebraska against his team, he could vote any other way. We'll be back with more after this. Feeling, feeling to this, knowing that tomorrow someone's going to wake up, they're going to be denied that national championship. What are your closing thoughts? Well, it happens far too often. It happened to Penn State a couple of years ago. It's going to happen to either Michigan or Nebraska, and I feel bad about it. I do want to say thank you both for being professional, for helping me through my first year. Thank you to CBS for having me. It's been a wonderful experience. I just enjoyed being with you thoroughly, and thanks to all the fans, how great they've been. We enjoyed being with you. I think, you know, when you look big picture, the things that are going to happen here in the offseason, is I think that the people that run college football really have to take to heart the lack of attendance at some of the lesser bowl games. They need to make sure that they really consider what's going on in college football and the fan interest level. They've got to make sure that they do things to help conferences like the Big East. They've got to keep the fan interest level high and not let it slip off. All right, Craig, Lou, look forward to being back with you next <laughs> season. This was a college football season that was memorable for many reasons. A farewell to not only Tom Osborne, but the ageless Eddie Robinson, too. The Nebraska miracle at Missouri. Charles Woodson's improbable yet commendable rise to the Heisman, the first defender to claim the award. The bonus for all fans of college football savoring just one more season by Peyton Manning in college and the grace with which he handled defeat. 
regrettably, in the end, the treasured American freedom of voting is what will most clearly define this year, though, not only because of the Heisman controversy, but for the teams as well. In a little more than two hours, the voting will be tabulated, and unless it's a split, one team will be undefeated and underappreciated for no logical reason. This great sport is left to the judges, no different than boxing or figure skating. Until a true playoff is constructed, college football may as well elect its champion the first Tuesday in November, as opposed to the first days of January. Congratulations to Michigan and Nebraska. You both answered every challenge. For everybody at CBS Sports, Happy New Year, and good night from Miami, Florida. Hey, Chris. Coach, congratulations. 25 unbelievable seasons at Nebraska. What a way to go out. Well, it was fun. Uh, really proud of the players. I, I think, Mike, they gave about all the effort they possibly could. We played physical football, uh, knocked a few people down, and it was a lot of fun. I uh, thought of a better way to end it than tonight. What do you think your fellow coaches may have thought about tonight's performance in terms of possibly awarding you the national championship? Well, I don't know. Uh, you know, I'm so close to it, Mike, it's, it's hard for me to say. I've not been a very good lobbyer. I don't really believe in it. Uh, I just want the voters to figure out who they would favor over every other team in the country if they played, and and whoever that is, Michigan, Nebraska, whatever. I hope they vote there. You know, not not based on um, on some uh, sentimental thing, but what they really believe, and and we'll, we can live with that. If people uh, vote uh, vote with their heart and their mind, uh, we're we're going to accept whatever they say. You've had so many great teams during your illustrious career. And each team is, it has a special chemistry and is almost like a, a child in your family, each one of them different. What about this 1997 edition of Cornhuskers? Well, a great, a great uh, focus, great heart. You know, they knew when we walked off this field last year, they wanted to come back here. It was a major goal, and it wasn't just uh, talk. It was, it was total commitment. You know, they worked at it in the offseason uh, throughout the summer, and uh, we're not here by accident. Uh, it wasn't anything I did. Uh, the players themselves decided this is what they wanted. They wanted to go for the national championship, and uh, they did all they could to get here. At the same time, you have to be mighty gratified that they were able to take care of business, focus on this game, and still at the same time send you off with a wonderful present. Well, like I told them, I said, Let, let's win this thing, not, not for me or anybody in particular. Let's win it for us because uh, we're all in this thing together, the assistant coaches, the fans, and the players. And, we have a lot, of, a lot of chemistry going right now, and, and I just hope it continues for Frank Solich uh, next year and the year after that, and that, that these guys come back and, and do it again. Well, on behalf of all of us who cover college football, Coach, congratulations, and we're going to miss you. Thanks, Mike. Chris, Coach Tom Osborne. Mike, thank you. Classy, understated to the end. He finishes up with a record of 255, 49, and 3. His second 13-0 season. Keep in mind, a 13-0 team has never gone unrewarded with a national championship. Some other numbers. The magic number, 23. That's how many coaches would have to change their vote from Michigan to Nebraska to give the Cornhuskers a share of the national championship. We believe the AP poll is going to go in a landslide to Michigan. What about it? How will it go? Well, Chris, over the last couple of weeks, I've been talking quite a bit about the Michigan Wolverines in both polls. But I'll tell you what, after seeing Nebraska up close and in person, if you go back to early in the year when the Missouri almost knocked off Nebraska, Michigan jumped them. I think you're going to find that in the coaches' poll, Nebraska will go over Michigan. We'll have a split poll with two national champions. Okay, I've been saying that to you for a while, yep. right? And okay, this is why I say that. Let's take the team. We don't care what it is, but let's take the team as Nebraska, and let's say they do this. They win 13 straight game. They beat their opponents by an average of 30 points. The best football in this country is played in the SEC, right? And they just beat the number one team in the SEC by 25 points, the number three team in the nation. Now, if you do all those things, should you get a piece of the title? It's a crazy sport, Lee. Of course, each team should get a piece. That's only justice. Las Vegas sports consultants would make Nebraska a seven-point favorite. It has nothing to do with the polls. Yes, we just give it to you for information. Back to Sports Center.